All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. And no, I'm not Ty, but you're thinking, oh, wonder where Ty's off to today. Well, Ty is currently in uh, America. See what happens when you drive a tire and it's muddy? <laughs> For work. So, if you are new to the channel here, or you don't know who I am, I'll introduce myself. I am Aaron, or as I'm known on social medias, uh, as Ventures Australia. Like I said, Ty is currently in America, and um, yeah, he's actually given me his ticket to the Ford F-150 uh, launch and drive day with Ford Australia. So usually he'd do these things, but he's currently in America for work. So he said, hey, do so you want to take over the channel for a couple of days and uh, do some filming for me and test out some cars and what? Bloody oath. So yeah, I've just pulled into Newcastle Airport here. Uh, it's nice and early and I should start making my way over to the terminal. But um, yeah, I'm gonna fly down to Melbourne and hang out with Ford for the next two days. So I'll bring you along with me and we'll uh, go test out some cars. Ford F-150 is bring back America's favourite truck to Aussie drivers. Well, we finally made it out to Werribee We're at Lancemore Mansion for the next couple of days, which is pretty cool. This place is insane. Ford is really turning it on. So, as you can see, there's all the cars, all the 150s in the background here. So, we get to our test drive these beasts which is really cool they're such nice vehicles but the guys um, at Ford have got a heap planned for us over the next couple of days we, we're doing a big walkthrough of the RMA facility where they remanufacture all these cars and um, yeah we just get to test them out do some towing um, learn about all the different features like the um, the reverse park towing features, which is really cool. And, um, yeah, so I guess we're gonna get straight into it and uh, test these vehicles out. Ooh, rightio. So, the first thing First, what I actually noticed, or what I did <laughs> before getting into the car, is I tried to put a GoPro on the roof. So I'm used to filming and just slapping a, a um, three-footed monster onto a car wherever you want. But in the F-150, it's actually, the body's all aluminium. So with that being said, the Ranger Raptor, the current next gen Ranger Raptor, is actually heavier than the F 150, which is pretty crazy because physically they're, they're huge compared to the Ranger Raptor. To have a car this size that's actually lighter than the next gen Ranger, Ranger Raptor, is mind blowing. Just on a little bit of dirt corrugations here coming out of Lancemore. Some cars, those little corrugations would feel intense, like crazy. But that felt all right. Oh, <laughs> holy dooly. That, that has some get up. So these new F-150s do have 298 kilowatts and I think it's 654 or 664, something like that, newton meters of torque. And then in this car, just straight out of the gate there, feels like a lot of power. So this weekend we've got, or this next couple of days, we've got 
the XLT, which is the base model um, that they're bringing in through Ford, and then the Lariat. To tell you what, they are chalk and cheese internally. So this one's fairly basic inside. <laughs> it's got some power. So they're fairly basic inside, cloth interior, a little bit of fake wood grain here and there, but it does feel a bit plasticky. I mean, it's nice, but for $110,000, I think they could do a little bit more. The steering wheel's nice, feels like a good size. Just adjusted the seat. I've got the seat sitting up sort of high, how I'd sit in my Ranger, because when I'm driving, I like to see over the bonnet and um, with the hardcore four-wheel driving that I personally like to do, I like to sit up and be able to see everything. But in terms of the size of the car, you know, it feels, it doesn't feel huge, which is nice. Like, in, like on the outside of the car, they do look quite large. So to sit in here, and have a nice bit of space between you and your missus or partner or whatever. You know, there's plenty of space. And even in the back, they, there is plenty of room. So if you're doing a long haul trip, you know, you're going up to Queensland or down south going skiing for the week, there's plenty of room. Your kids in the back aren't gonna be poking each other because they've got plenty of space as well, which is also something to think about, which is also good. Well, let's give it a little bit. <laughs> this 80k is far out. <laughs> Man, that's impressive. 3.6 litre EcoBoost. That's a lot of power. I mean, this car is super smooth on road. It's nice to drive, feels planted. We've got a few chicanes coming up here. This is an impressive truck. This, yep. You know, I, through work, I, I do get to drive a lot of different, you know, American style trucks. Uh, something they're rattling back there. Um, the Ram 1500s, the F250s. I'm not licensed to drive a 350 unless it's detuned. Same with the 2500s and I can drive those and some 3500s. I think, yeah, if you're looking at the US market for a truck, I think this is the new standard. It has to be. This is a nice, even in the XLT, it's a very nice car. But as a daily, man, super quiet in here. We had some time with, uh, Peter and Tom did a lot of work on the um, development and the conversion and everything for the F-150 and I asked them, you know, what's the turnaround from when an F-150 lands on the ground till it's out the door converted? 22 hours. I just want to quickly ask you, Tom. Yes. Is Tom. G'day. So I asked the question in there earlier. Mm. How long does it take from when one of these hits the ground in Australia yeah. to running out the door for me to purchase one, basically? <laughs> basically. That's a really good question. <laughs> I mean, there's a few steps along yep. the way. Um, you got to get from the boat to the yeah. holding yard, from the holding yard to the plant. There's probably, when we're up and running and, and we're moving smoothly, I would say there's probably a few weeks in that. Yep. Uh, and then once it gets to the plant, it's about... 22 hours, 22 yep. working hours from start to finish. It's and then crazy. after that, it just needs to get to the dealer. Yeah, so there you go. 22 hours, they gut the whole thing, flip it over. There's so many components in this car that they reproduce and remanufacture to make it to Australian standards and to give it that OE feeling and factory finish 
that it comes out with from the States, which is mind blowing. Like, er, the, just even though this is the XLT, just the detail in finishes is second to none. Like, I've been in plenty of US conversions where, you know, you go to wind down the window and you go to wind down the driver's side and the passenger side actually comes down because they've just taken it out of the door on the effectively left-hand drive driver's side door and replaced it into the right-hand drive door. So the buttons are back to front. There's wiring issues. There's so many small things that they've thought about with converting the F-150 from US to Australian which and you can tell you you would not know this car has been converted that's how good the finishes are it's crazy 22 hours it's been a long road for this car to come out into Australia and by golly congratulations Ford like you, you have nailed it just everything works nicely got all your different four-wheel drive modes like everything is how it should be awesome so just been for a first drive in the xlt which is nice very impressive so this behind me here is the lariat so the next step up heaps of cool features four and a half ton towing you got all your um, disco lights for around the car all your cameras and um yeah, it's really cool with the towing. So this camera goes straight down onto your tow ball to see exactly where you are as opposed to your trailer. Oh, jeez. I just pressed a button. <laughs> How cool is that? And I think this pops out. Oh, you just... I just broke it. That's <laughs> <laughs> a tailgate. Yeah. Work that bit out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There we go, straight into the bed. It's got a nice, I don't know if it's Raptor coat or bed liner. And then you've got these big cleats, lockdown cleats as well in here. So there's plenty of room if you want to stick a dirt bike in here. We'll leave the tailgate open. So we've also got lighting into your tub as well, which is pretty cool at night. And then over here, so you've got power. Oh. And then if we jump out on the step, which is actually pretty handy. I guess you, you fold that back up. And then it's all assisted, spring assisted as well. Beautiful car. Just your leaf sprung suspension under there. So it's got a 790 kilo. I'm not sure of the stats. It's about just 800 kilos just under 800 kilo payload four and a half ton towing and then they've also kept uh the keypad the same side around here so you still got access on the curb side if you want to if you're going to the beach or you know you go to the shops you don't want to carry your keys still got access to the keypad the reason why they didn't move it around to the driver's side it was a cost thing and the amount of money that it would have been to transfer that keypad to the driver's side would be astronomical so i get why they've done that just fair enough safer on the curb side as well which makes sense and then internally it's actually beautiful in here so shut the door and it's super quiet and like I said, with the interior on the XLT, the finishes in the Lariat are so much nicer. And you got these cool graphics on the dash. So we open up the door. Infotainment's huge landscape view. And then you got knobs for everything, which is good. Nothing worse than having just push buttons for everything, especially uh, volume. So, which is good to see that. And then all these bits and pieces, look at that. So 
So your shifter folds down and then that opens up into a nice flat workspace, which is pretty cool if you're sitting here having lunch or whatever. Yeah, it's really nice. Same sort of steering wheel, the XLT, but just the finishes in here are much nicer. Leather seats, um, you got vented, heated and cooled front seats, and I think they're heated back seats as well. And then the giant moonroof, which when you're driving here, this makes it feel huge. Same car as the XLT, but that just gives it this feel of massiveness inside. And then you've got 18, oh, 18 speaker B&O, Bang & Olf, Olfsen, uh, which cranks. Cranks in the XLT as well, but this one, once you tune it correctly to your taste, um, yeah, it'd be insane. So super nice. Yeah, I'm very impressed. Well done, Ford. Well done. Anyone who buys one of these cars, trucks, is um, yeah going to be very pleasant, present, pleasantly surprised with how nice and well built they are, back to OEM standards. So yeah, it's really cool. They have they have like remanufactured so much stuff to. Yeah, keep it factory. Yeah. You can chuck it into um, towing hall if you like, just to see what it's like. We're going to turn left up here at the okay. uh, green shade house, but yep. if you want to, uh, am I right in going normal uh, tow hall? Yeah. So give it a bit, oh, and it'll color. yeah change oh, color, yeah. and you'll you find that it starts revving more in a minute. Okay. Gives you a bit more torque, engine. Yeah. I, you know, I think it just applies a bit more engine yeah. braking and things like that. Turn yep. I'm not the tech to for the terms, but it does feel more change, change of change dynamics. The curve yeah, of it. correct. It does feel more stable. Feel that different? Yeah, it comes on yeah. earlier. More torque, yeah. Okay. More. Holds it longer. Yeah, holds through. Maybe it, it's pretty smooth. Like it's super smooth. It is. Yeah. Like if you didn't know this was a. A V6, you would probably just assume it's a V8. Yep. But just a quiet V8. 100%. So, just got back from a bit of a drive. So, this new age on the back of this Lariat weighs about 3 ton, 3.2, I think, something like that. It's a decent sized caravan. But, um, yeah, like I said, the, the brakes work bloody awesome on this. It's all electric braked. Um, yeah, I jammed the brakes on a couple of times and you didn't even feel the caravan flinch at all on the road. And then in terms of power, it's got a small engine, smaller engine, you, you got the, the V6, but the power just is real smooth. The gearbox doesn't hunt for gears, um, which is nice, but the, just the power to the floor is there when you want it. Um, and internally it just sounds like a V8 and if you if you didn't know that this was a V6 you know you just think it was a quiet V8 but sounds really good so which is quite impressive so you know you people that are going to buy this for towing horse floats big trailers car trailers um, things like that they're going to be very impressed with the power that they have which is really cool um yeah I'm, I'm actually very impressed so if you're watching this and you think what about the timing like 
you, you, you really are going to be blown away with how good it does tow, which is very, very impressive. Uh, I guess they've built them for a reason, you know, four and a half ton towing. But the Lariat, oh, internally, it's beautiful. It's very luxurious, which is nice. So. Start using your the little, wheel. little yeah, practice, <laughs> start using a dial to bring and it back then, and okay. foot off the pedal and a bit of throttle. Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah. That wheel it, is it doesn't skinny. feel right. And if you're feeling it's, you can, yeah, keep turning it. I've got to trust this, don't I? You do. Yeah, you got to trust. You got to trust. Used, used to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's about trusting the um, the, the the screen. Oh, I'm going straight for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's bizarre. Because did you just use that as your steering wheel then? Was that? Yeah, that it is. is yeah. That is your effective. So I go forward. So you go yeah. forward. Yep. And that'll just stay on. That stays on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Because oh. you've got your pro trailer button yeah. pressed on. Oh. Yeah. So you need to cut it right left. Sort of like that. Yeah. So if you let it go now, and if you just back, so it's pretty much in that trajectory now oh, right so when you release it just goes that's it oh, that's bizarre. so somewhere there to the right again yeah because it's still on that angle that's it oh, it just feels wrong mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh don't forget but it's the first time you've tried yeah, it right exactly yeah exactly right yeah. the my um driving just user driving he just wants me to grab oh, the steering wheel yeah, yeah, and yeah. just look at the mirrors yeah, yeah. like straight away because i know i can do it because i've driven multiple weightboard boats and different size trailers and everything like that so just to put all your trust in this little yeah, dial yeah. and to turn the opposite way of what you would yeah think yep yeah it's bizarre well, this is not a small boat this is a super nautique g23 it's like one of the biggest weightboard boats you can get in australia so Nathan and I have done this. It's pretty easy for Nathan. But they're making Pat go different. Test it out properly. It's um, actually really cool technology. Once you get your, your head around the fact that you've got to watch uh, the back of the trailer there um, and use the little dial to go what way you want, it's actually pretty handy. So those people that have you know, just bought an F-150 and haven't really towed before, buying a 21 foot or a 25 foot caravan, they can, um, yeah, it does make that a lot easier for them to be able to tow and take that nervous factor out of it, which um, a lot of people suffer when they're towing. Yeah, if you've towed a lot, so I've had my license since I was 17, I've been towing since then, so it's like 22 years or something, but to put all, all of everything you've learned about towing into a little dial and a couple of cameras. It's yeah, something that you'd really have to get used to. He's cooked it. <laughs> and I know Pat has a lot of experience with towing as well, so which he'd be finding it very bizarre, I reckon. What'd you think, Pat? It's quite bizarre, isn't it? It really is. That's hard to get used to. It's not. not and you've done a lot of towing. Yeah. A lot of yeah. different like trailers and things like that and i think that's the biggest problem is if you started fresh that, yeah. that button would be perfect be pretty but, easy yeah yeah but but when you when you so you, well you're doing opposites aren't you yeah. so yeah you're yeah. used to putting your trust in your mirrors that's but right now yeah. you got to throw it out and put your trust in a couple of little cameras that's it. <laughs> so this whole tow bar under here is uh designed by brink and it's a four and a half ton towing tow bar so it's been specifically designed for the f-150 um, because one of what the boys said is that the factory one that come on there um, only lasted 15 percent of the torture test so from the u.s uh, market that they bought over with, in development for the f-150s which is pretty cool so this is all redesigned specifically for australian conditions 
Um, it also comes with a 70 mil ball, a forged drop hitch as well. Um, and then you also get your 50 mil ball and another hitch as well to suit. And then you get this adapter for all your trailers. So you can buy this as a kit um, or you get one with the car. With all your trailer as well, it's an anti-theft. So if someone unplugs the trailer plug uh, with your four pass, it'll send you a message and alert um, and it'll set the alarm off. So yeah, it stops trailer theft, which is pretty cool as well. So I know I've heard plenty of stories yeah. down the boat ramp where people's trailers got stolen. So you don't want that. They cost a lot of money. Oh, right, so just yeah. one other thing yeah, as well. A bit more of a drive day today, Mr. Sammy Woo! Young. So I think we're gonna, we've got a 63 kilometer drive. We get to test these beasts out a bit better. Um, so yeah, sit back and relax and enjoy the Lariat. Come for the right, you know, fun fact, Lariat translates to a rope you can use as a lasso. Oh. And therefore, I think Ford has done this intentionally because they've roped us all into an F-150. Ooh. True. And I, you know what? Sounds like a piss take, but it's, it's not a, even. It's a fact. It's a fact. <laughs> Take it to the bank. Okay, I'm going with it. <laughs> the lasso. Just finished a 63 kilometer drive. We're just talking comparatively 300 series right now and the Lariat. What do you reckon if they were side by side and bang for buck and all that sort of jazz? What do you reckon? I'm going F truck. Yeah. Which hurts me to say <laughs> as a Toyota devout man. Um, but I think more towing. Big, yeah, bigger, here. Time. bigger cab. Yeah, heaps more space inside more compared space. to the 300 series. Um, I think the actual fit and finish of this is very similar to a Toyota. Yep. So you're not sacrificing that. Yep. Um, a lot of buttons, a lot of features. A lot of things. I think the only thing that Toyota probably has over this is Toyota's off-road crawl control. Yep. Whereas this doesn't really have that really advanced active sort of traction yeah. control system for off-road, but... But it's mainly for towing. These are designed to tow. It's for towing. Are you going to take $150,000 300 off-road? You're probably not, no, are you? It's not too many people that would do that. So... And probably... there's not too many tracks that you or I would hit in something like this no, either. That's right. But it's if never... I was towing a boat or a horse float, something like that... Yeah. It's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, it's a very nice car, and yeah. it hauls. It hauls up. It hauls up. Absolutely hauls. That place is massive. <laughs> Holy dooly. RMA. RMA. So this is RMA that we're coming to now, which is the remanufacturing uh, facility for all the Fords. It is huge. So this is where they do all the remanufacturing of all the F-150s that come into the country, which is side by side to the Ford Spares warehouse. Yeah, just down just here. You know what, we're going to go left there, but yeah. we'll take you for a tour. Yeah, little, you come yeah. to our left now is well, RMA. Yeah, and, and then you look at what's on this sign right there. Ford. Which is the... Australia's yes, the dis all the spare parts for every yeah. Ford, yeah, which go. is also massive. So this facility that we're going to go check out is twenty-two thousand square meters. Is that what? It um, I think the technical term is massive. Oh, shit, like <laughs> <laughs> um, I hate the terms. Um, it's it's huge. Yeah, this will be one of those warehouses where I think you could stand on one side, look, and just not see the end. It's yeah. just going to go forever and ever. So, yeah, I'm not sure if the cameras are allowed in here, but we're going to park up and go check it out. So, I'm um, going to be a pretty cool see opportunity to see yeah. where all the magic happens, as they say. That's right.
I'll tell you what, if after being at the RMA to do this walkthrough, man, it's something that you don't get to do very often, but to see how they actually remanufacture all these F-150s, you know, they're doing 20 a day that come in on a truck and then go out on a truck. It's absolutely mind blowing. Um, such a cool experience to be part of. Um, and to be honest with you, if you <laughs> got to see what I've got to see and drive these cars over the last two days, mate, the 140 grand or whatever it is for the Lariat as the swap over, seems very cheap. And I would happily throw my money down to purchase one of these cars. Amazing to drive. Ford has done an amazing job working with RMA to do this and they have absolutely nailed it. So well done. Hopefully, uh, yeah, Ty, thank you for giving me this chance to hang out with the Ford crew. Um, and hopefully everyone watching Ty's YouTube channel, yeah, has helped, you give some, helped me to give you some insight into, you know, the process of, um, remanufacturing one of these beasts so anyway don't forget to like ty's youtube channel subscribe and if you got any comments drop them down below and i'll get back to you through my youtube channel Adventures australia um yeah thanks for having me cheers guys hey guys i'm back from america so i just want to say a massive shout out to az for going to melbourne and uh checking out the f-150 getting his first impressions on the thing uh, so yeah, I was in the US, I was in Kansas uh, for a whole month. Uh, we actually did have a hired XLT F-150, so I drove that around for a whole month and got to really experience <laughs> that, that vehicle firsthand. Obviously not converted, but uh, how it comes from the factory over there. And as as mentioned, it, it sounds like the Australian converted one is is pretty much exactly on point um, how Ford's intended it to be, just like in the US. So. I got to really experience the F-150 and it was uh, really, really good. Um, very impressed with, with using that thing daily. Uh, I will be getting all my thoughts together and hopefully I can get a uh, media F-150 or Ford and do some more videos with the F-150. I'll have all the links to Az's channel in the description if you wanna go and check out Az Ventures Australia as well. He does a bunch of off-road stuff. And you can also see him on our four-wheel drive 24-7, driving the big MIT 79 pretty much in every episode. So, yeah, go and check that out. But, yeah, thanks again to Az for, for doing that for me, for going down there. And I'll, uh, yeah, unfortunately, you can probably hear I'm a bit under the weather. So I'll uh, be trying to get an F-150 here soon and, uh, yeah, be uh, doing some tests with it. And we'll put it up against the big F-250 and, and see how they compare, the F-150 versus F-250. So, anyway, guys... Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See you.